Hi and welcome to A British Audio File. If you don't know me already, my name is Taryn and I'm giving you a little bit of a different perspective this week in order to show you the rail subwoofer on the right hand side of your screens. It's something that I regularly use in my reviews but seldomly talk about. And it's fair to say there's a whole bunch of audio files out there that still haven't embraced the use of subwoofers in their two channel systems. And I understand some of their concerns. They see it more of a home cinema type of thing there's certainly a lot more low frequency information in a movie than there is in your typical musical recording. And also they've spent all this money on a two channel system to get tight and fast bass. Why the hell would they put a boom box in the corner of the room? Well, part of the problem is exactly that, a boom box in the corner of the room, but we'll get into that later. Could it be that there's other benefits to having subwoofers in your system other than the obvious bass extension and bass weight, and perhaps they may be missing out. Let's delve in. What are the benefits of adding subwoofers into a two-channel system? Well, let's start with the most obvious first, bass extension. And let's say that your typical bookshelf or monitor speaker, its low frequencies start rolling off around the mid 40s. Floor standing speakers, well, they'll extend further. If you're lucky, you might get down to the mid 30s. Now there are great big whacking floor standing speakers that extend way beyond that, but I'm talking about what's ordinarily the case. All bar the smallest subwoofers will extend down to the 20s, maybe even beyond that, depending on their size and output capability. There's not much naturally produced music below about 40 Hertz. Sure, there's plenty of synthetic music produced in a studio, but I'm talking about music produced by real instruments. There's the last couple of notes on the end of the scale of a grand piano. Certainly a pipe organ will extend down a little bit further than that. A double bass is capable of going down below 40 hertz, and I'm sure there's a couple of other instruments as well. Most of your percussive information from the likes of drums and things like that happens between 50 and 100 hertz, but it's still fair to say that by adding a subwoofer, you're picking up low frequency information that would ordinarily be lost. Then there's the dynamics. Now each room has a transitional frequency and it's likely to be between 200 and 300 hertz depending on its size. In a very large room it's going to be closer to 200 hertz and in a very small room it's going to be closer to 300 hertz. Above the transitional frequency that's where it's useful to think of sound in terms of reflections. A bit like balls bouncing around a pool table. Although here in the UK we prefer snooker. That is a daft digression. I'm gonna keep it in anyway. Regardless, below the transitional frequency, that's where you're talking about big wavelengths and a lot of energy. It's more useful to think of sound in terms of pressure, areas of high and low pressure. And it's your entire space that's being pressurized. So if you've got a listening space that opens up to a kitchen or a hallway, it's that space that's being pressurized as well. This is where subwoofers really come into their own. They typically have larger cones and a lot more power and are much more capable of shifting air than your ordinary woofer. And because of that, they can deal with and basically produce swings in pressure much more effectively. That results in much better dynamics and a more engaging sound. There's a couple of strange effects that adding subwoofers can have in your system and that's an increase in the sound stage and opening up the mid-range. Effectively, you have more space in between the instruments. And I've never found an explanation of this that I'm totally satisfied with, other than the fact that I know that changing the low frequencies certainly changes your perception of other frequencies higher up in the range. But it's something that's regularly reported by people who have well-integrated subwoofers in their system, and it's backed up by my own experience as well. The last benefit that I want to talk about from adding subwoofers in a two-channel system I think perhaps is the most important of all and that is that they're a form of active bass management. So what do I mean by that? Well, they help to deal with perhaps the biggest acoustic challenge that most people face in their rooms and that is to try and achieve an even bass response. Now this is really important for home cinemas where you may have more than one seating position so getting an even bass response across the room is really important. But you also want an even response in your sweet spot if you've got a two-channel hi-fi system. 
and subwoofers certainly help to do that. There are other solutions as well. For example, the bass traps that you typically see in the corner of some people's rooms. Now this is an unfortunate name and the reason is that they are normally made out of some kind of glass fiber or rock wall type material and they're no more than 30 centimeters or one foot deep. And if you look at the specs, they do practically nothing below 100 hertz. They're really operating in the 100 hertz plus region. Now I'm not saying they're not beneficial in that particular bandwidth. I'm just saying that they don't really do much for the bass. The fundamental first standing wave that occurs in most people's rooms due to the dimensions happens between 50 and 80 hertz. The upper harmonics are obviously higher up and these devices aren't really doing much in that region. It is possible to have bass traps that are effective in that region. They're normally some kind of membrane, diaphragmatic or Helmholtz resonator, but those are much more specific devices that require measurements in order to make sure that they're operating in the right region and that normally requires a great deal of skill, knowledge or some kind of professional intervention. I'd also just briefly like to talk about digital base management systems or DSB room correction systems. Now these have got a lot better in recent years and I think they can be quite effective below the transitional frequency of the room, say below 250 hertz. But above the transitional frequency of the room, I'm yet to hear one that I've been impressed with enough to think, do you know what, I'd really like to try that at home. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, technology moves on all the time. Below the transitional frequency, well that's a different story, but I still think you need to be judicious in how they're used. I wouldn't be pulling frequencies up or down much more than 3 dB. You start to do more than that and then you start to ask quite a bit of your speaker drivers mechanically and the DSP engine creates more problems than it tends to solve. By far the most important thing to get right in terms of getting good bass response in your room is setting up your speakers in the right location. That's called positional EQ. And I did a video on speaker setup in your room. So if you haven't seen that, you might wanna go and check that out. I'll link it in the description notes to this video. Once you've got your speakers in the right position, well, adding subwoofers can be really beneficial to achieve a smooth bass response in your room, as long as they're integrated correctly. It's all about adding additional bass sources, going from two bass sources, which is your main speakers, to three by adding one subwoofer, and better still, by adding a second subwoofer, going to four bass sources. Think of it a bit like ripples on a pond. Dropping in one stone will give you a series of ripples, dropping in two, it does that, and so on with three and four. If you're talking about subwoofers purely for music reproduction, they don't need to be massive. You don't need something to dig down to 16 hertz and have huge amounts of output. So two small ones are certainly better than one large one for the reasons I just mentioned. And I have one large one, so what's that all about? Well, I got this 20 odd years ago before I fully understood all this stuff and I can't really add a second one because I don't have the space to accommodate it. So what I do is I make sure that that one subwoofer is optimized to give an even bass response in a relatively small area, and that is my listening position. And it works quite effectively in that application. So why have some audiophiles had poor experiences of subwoofers in their systems before? Well, it's probably because they've had one large subwoofer stuck in the corner of the room that's poorly set up and poorly integrated with their main system. The corner of the room is where you get the maximum bang for your buck, the maximum boundary reinforcement. It's great if all you're after is a lot of volume, but if you want fast, tight, accurate bass, it's really the best option. They'd have been much better off with two subwoofers located away from the corners of the room. Now I'm sure there's a whole bunch of videos out there already in terms of how to set up subwoofers correctly, and if there isn't, it may be something that I'll consider doing in a future video. But in the interim, here's my general advice. If you're setting up two subwoofers, and that would be the ideal, you want to deal with them independently. So get the location of one subwoofer correct first. That's called positional EQ, as I mentioned earlier in the video. And that's by far the most important thing to get right. If you're 
doing some kind of DSP. We'll do that later. That's really the icing on the cake. It won't fix fundamental problems from having your sub in the wrong location. Now, there's something called the subwoofer crawl, where you place the subwoofer in the location of your listening spot and you crawl along the floor to listen for the best location. If you're doing that, just make sure you choose a well-recorded track, something with varied bass and something that you're familiar with. You don't want to be learning what's on the recording whilst you're trying to figure out the best location for your sub. Do that for one subwoofer and then repeat the exact same process for the second subwoofer. Now the objective here is to try and get these subwoofers to seamlessly integrate into your main system. You certainly don't want to hear bass coming from the location of your subwoofer. If that happens, the likelihood is you've got your crossover set too high or your volume set too high or both. So make those necessary adjustments and you'll get it sounding right. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, please hit that like button, please share it. And if you like what I'm doing with this channel and you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. And also don't forget to check me out on Patreon. But for today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.